from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, bringing you data-driven insights from the Cube and ETR. This is Breaking Analysis with Dave Vellante. The ever-expanding cloud has become ubiquitous. No longer is the cloud some remote set of services you know, somewhere up in the sky. Rather, the cloud is seeping into every industry, hybrid, on-prem models, edge workloads, telco markets, and even has its sights set on space. The market size is staggering and will surpass a trillion dollars in revenue when including infrastructure, IS, and PaaS, SaaS, and professional services. That'll happen this decade. In fact, <laughs> probably next year. Much AI work is being done today in the public cloud. And despite indications that bringing AI to on-prem data is going to be a growing trend, it's unlikely that the cloud will stop expanding anytime soon. Hello and welcome to this week's The Cube Research Insights, powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, we share our latest cloud market updates with an expanded view beyond the typical big four hyperscalers on which we typically focus. We'll also break down the market in more granular detail with the addition of four vendors in a total market view. In addition, we'll drill into the IaaS and PaaS markets and set up a framework for future research. First, let's start with survey data from ETR. This XY chart is a common view that we like to share on breaking analysis. It's based on ETR's October TSIS survey, the Technology Spending Intention Survey of 1,775 IT decision makers. This view represents the cloud computing sector and about 1,200 of those respondents in the end that provided uh, data on their cloud spend. The vertical axis shows a net score. That's a measure of spending momentum on a particular platform. The horizontal axis shows overlap or penetration within those respondent accounts. The table insert in the lower right shows that each vendor shows each vendor in their net score and their N, i.e. the number of respondents for that vendor. These both inform how the dots are plotted on that XY axis. And you can see Microsoft and AWS are pro both prominent and dominant with 976 and 781 N, i.e. responses respectively. Now note the red line at 40% on the vertical axis. That's an indicator of a highly elevated net score and only AWS and Microsoft are above that line. Google Cloud is close to that line, and we've seen increased penetration on the x-axis since uh, the GPT heard around the world. Now, notice also names like Salesforce and mm -hmm. Dell. CoreWeave, for the first time, has hit the list. You got Red Hat, IBM, HPE, Oracle, VMware, where spending momentum has come down. We did a breaking analysis on that last week. It's, it's misleading, uh, but nonetheless, that's how the methodology works. Misleading from the standpoint of actual dollars spent. That's not what ETR tracks, but we'll save that for another day. You can go back and look at last week's breaking analysis. But you also see Rackspace, DXC, AT&T, DigitalOcean, Cloudflare, of course, Alibaba, Akamai, and Lumen. The point is this. This is how customers view cloud when you ask them which clouds they're using. Their responses represent a wide variety of platforms, from public cloud hyperscalers to SaaS companies to service providers to hosting companies and more. So that's a good starting point to look at what I'll call the kitchen sink view of the market. In other words, a view of the cloud market beyond the big three hyperscalers and, of course, Alibaba that we commonly report on, and, and a view that reflects more closely how customers look at their cloud. So this table shows our attempt to size the total market. We've expanded the scope beyond the big four hyperscalers that we usually focus on to include hybrid cloud players like IBM and Oracle, which both own public clouds, and two additional cloud players in China, Tencent and Huawei. Now we're attempting to size IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS and include cloud-based professional services. Notice the big other, which includes both other SaaS and professional services. Think about it this way from a top-down methodology standpoint. IT spending is around $5 trillion worldwide, of which about two-thirds is staffing, internal staffing. So that means that about $2 trillion is vendor revenue. 
and cloud at $875 billion makes up about 40% of that spend. So the market is growing at a 17% CAGR from 22 to 24. That's overall. And you can see Microsoft is number one because of its large SaaS contribution. AWS, in this view, is second with very little SaaS and, and very little professional services. So that's a view of the very big picture of cloud computing. So now let's break it down further and we'll start with IaaS. IaaS is infrastructure as a service and includes the core compute, storage, and networking services. We also include things like load balancing and any built-in security, things like gateways and other core infrastructure. The market in 2024, we project to approach 207 billion which is a 21% CAGR from 22 to 24. AWS, Azure, GCP, and Alibaba dominate with more than 70% of the market. AWS leads with uh, 35% of the market, and we believe its IaaS business is growing more slowly than its overall cloud business as, pa as its PaaS mix increases, and its SaaS is growing as well from a much smaller base. Oracle is touting a big growth story as it gears up OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And meanwhile, the players in China are sorting through local market challenges and some cloud restructuring. But as you can see, restructuring of their cloud businesses, but as you can see, they are major players as well. Now, unlike in SaaS and services, the other in this segment accounts for less than 20% of the total revenue. Now let's shift focus and take a look at platform as a service projections. PaaS includes core databases, and related services, analytics, application services, streaming, machine learning, and other AI tools, and related platform services. Used to build apps, the market is projected to grow to over 80 billion this year at a 25% CAGR from 22 to 24. As with IS, the big four cloud players account for more than 70% of the market, and the other is less than 20%. PaaS is increasingly strategic, is the glue, think of it as the glue between infrastructure and applications. Now, we're not ready to expose our SaaS and cloud professional services granularity at the moment. You saw in the ETR data, the first slide that we showed, names like Salesforce and DXC representing both software and services firms respectively, but there are many more. You think about uh, ServiceNow. Workday, for example, in SaaS, and Accenture in services. IBM is services heavy, as are many others. Unlike IS and PaaS, where other comprises less than 20% of the market, in SaaS and services, our other accounts for 80% of the spend. So we need to do more work before we can release that data to the public. So let's close with a consolidated look where we have more confidence in the data at the IS and PaaS, more confidence, and we have more bottoms up granularity. With, uh, with name vendors, we can let's look at the consolidated IS and PaaS space, stripping out Microsoft's large SaaS business, and the same with Google. This gives us more of an apples-to-apples -apples comparison with AWS's business. Here we show the granularity of our eight companies in the combined IS and PaaS cloud market at nearly $297 billion projected for 2024. Let's call it $300 billion. AWS has 36% of that space, Microsoft 23% and Google 7%, Alibaba, Oracle, Tencent, Huawei, and IBM combined for around 14% of the market, with other, which is not shown here, at 20%. So the cloud market continues to grow rapidly. It's driven by increasing adoption of cloud services across industries. AWS, Microsoft, and Google remain the top players, while Oracle and other companies are really gaining traction, Oracle in particular. When including SaaS and services and accounting for the preponderance of other uh, players in the market, it takes on a different dimension. The SaaS and services markets are highly fragmented. And while much of the SaaS industry runs on the public cloud, the revenue captured by non-hyperscalers is substantial. Professional services, always the largest category, consumes another big chunk of revenue. Now remember, these models use a combination of top-down and bottom-up methodologies. The IaaS and PaaS figures for AWS, Microsoft, Google, and Alibaba have the highest degree of confidence, in a large part because we've been tracking that since you know, around 2015, 2016 on a quarterly basis. Now, notwithstanding the fact that interpreting financial data and mapping to create an apples-to-apples -apples comparison is as much art as it is clean financial math, you're always running into things like Microsoft 
you know, changing its definitions, as do many vendors. Oracle did the same. IBM does the same. Uh, so it's 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 a lot of squinting through the data, talking to people, looking at survey survey data, modeling, and then trying to get your best estimates on on in the, into the spreadsheets. Now the Oracle and the IBM data are somewhat more precise than the other vendors that we've shown. However, both firms, the, the other new vendors, however, both firms have pretty much opaque reporting methods. As I said, they've changed a lot for their cloud business over time, and so those. Those frequently changing definitions, you know, make it more difficult to track on a consistent basis. But anecdotal data is strong for both companies, given their respective histories, their U.S.-based locations, and as well, we have survey data that's more available for these U.S.-based firms. The data on Tencent and Huawei are interpreted through bits and pieces of information, limited survey data, certainly financial information, which is not as frequent as you get in the U.S., conversations with local sources uh, from China, including individuals in the community in the U.S. that have visibility on those firms. Much of the SaaS and services data is interpreted through top-down methodologies, taking to put into account financial statements, management commentary on, on cloud performance, guidance on earnings calls, and then essentially taking a look at the overall IT market and subtracting IS and PaaS estimates from the total cloud figures, which we derived, again, based on those top -down, that top-down methodology discussed earlier. And as indicated, the SaaS and services markets, they're highly fragmented. They're definitionally opaque as it pertains to cloud. And that's certainly the case in earnings reports, uh, but they're extremely large. And the same is true for, for, you know, for cloud generally, as each vendor has different interpretation of what they include in their cloud reporting. So there you have it. We've tried to give you additional granularity in our data sets as a service to the community. And we'll continue to refine this over time. We appreciate your feedback on where you think we got it right and how we can improve the models. Let us know. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks to Alex Meyerson and Ken Schiffman on production and on our podcast and Kristen Martin and Cheryl Knight help get the word out on social media and in our newsletters. And Rob Hof is our EIC over at siliconangle.com. They all really appreciate your contributions and, and all the editing that you do and social media distribution. Remember, all these episodes are available as podcasts. Wherever you listen, just search Breaking Analysis Podcast. Please subscribe. I publish each week on thecuberesearch.com and siliconangle.com. And you can email me at david.vellante at siliconangle.com or DM me at dvellante or comment on my LinkedIn posts. And please do check out etr.ai for the best survey data in the enterprise tech business. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube Research Insights, powered by ETR. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Breaking analysis. <laughs> <laughs>